Here's a question. Can you tell whose work this is? Who made these? How about these? Too easy? Well, how about these? Now, before I start, I just want to say this isn't a critique. It's more a curious observation. I've talked a lot about directors before and a little about styles of animation. But today I want to talk about something new. Studios, as with any business, want to see their brand recognized in a positive light. Some you can see the logo at the start and the work they produce varies from feature to feature. Others prefer a distinct visual style carried across their work. Only with CG, the style is actually getting a lot more difficult to differentiate. I mean, these are four different films. I'm not saying the design is in any way sterile. It's actually quite beautiful. But the thing is, it was made by four different studios. With any brand, the three main goals are recognition, setting yourself apart from others, and this creates a connection between you and your audience. Essentially, they know what to expect. With certain directors, their style and theme sets them apart. And then that style is adopted into the company's aesthetic. Look at Leica Studios. There's a distinct visual style carried throughout their films. Asymmetrical character faces, squared edges, thin puppetry. It's all there. So, with that in mind, do you know who made these? No! No! <laughs> well done. If you answered up. Oh, hold on. If you answered Ardman Animations, 50 schnookles for you. Uh, oh, really? Ardman are probably one of the easiest international brands to recognize in the animation world. For me, when I'm going to see an Ardman feature, I'm already smiling before it even starts. This is a studio that fosters talent with directors like Steve Box, Richard Starzak, Barry Purvis, Sarah Smith, David Bowers and Sam Fell, all cutting their teeth in Ardman. They've been remixed, reused and honored around the world. Rumble will soon have your garden gnomes back in tip-top condition. If you think about the success and the power of their first feature film, Chicken Run, I mean it's credited as being the force for the creation of the best animated feature category at the Oscars. And speaking of the Oscars, Nick Park's work alone has been nominated for six Oscars. He's only lost twice, and once was to himself. It speaks to the success of the storytelling ability fostered in Ardman, but enough gushing. Today I'm going to focus on three people, a triumvirate in Ardman, Peter Lord, David Sproxton, and Nick Park. These three men are at the center of what I categorize as the Ardman style. I don't mean a unified aesthetic, there's a lot more to it than that, and I think it boils down to three key factors. It really begins with a blob of plasticine, or clay. And then, say hello to Morph. Ardman, of course, are known for working primarily in stop frame or stop motion, or in Ardman's case, claymation. Now, I know they've worked with CG. I'll get to that. In their early shorts, you can see a heavy influence of Terry Gilliam's work on Monty Python. That cutout animation where you can actually just manipulate the elements on screen. 
uh, whilst taking a picture. It really stands towards stop-motion animation. Though, as with British kids of their time, they grew up watching the shows by Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman, like Noggin the Nog, The Clangers, and Bagpuss. Of course, they were also influenced by Ray Harryhausen's work, and it was in Stop Frame where they really took off. When I saw Jason and the Arguments, I thought, that's the best. I can't believe that this is so perfect that you could you could put fantasy on the screen like that. Unlike other forms of animation, generally what you capture with that flick of a shutter is what appears on screen at the end. It's similar to live action in that the sets, props, lighting and action is figured out and created in pre-production and then set up for shooting. It was a perfect avenue to play with Lord's creative flair and Sprockton's love of cinematography. I mean, there was real delight, the fact you could take a slump of clay, animate it, give it character, give it real life, do things with it. Traditionally, they were just blobs of clay, shaped and formed. But now they've evolved into having a metal armature covered in clay and other materials like silicon. And even when Ardman approached their first feature in CG, they brought about a lot of their stop frame sensibilities with them. Yeah, CGI is an interesting uh, development for us. We started work on it I know, a good few years ago now. Our attitude was we wanted to do what we did in stop frame in CGI, in other words, the quality thresholds and the performance skills, what you see in terms of animation expression. We wanted to have been at that same quality. Though they did return to claymation for features, and I think really this is due to its hands-on nature. Their fingerprints are literally all over their work. And look at the hair boil caused by its disruption between shots. They don't shy away from imparting that essence of the animator. The clay feel is really important. Mm. It's important, all those small nuances and, and shifts of expression. And, you know, it, I think it does rely on being plasticine myself. The, the, the CG versions we've done tend to look a bit robotic. I wouldn't really like to see a film done like that myself. You know, not with Wallace and Gromit anyway. In fact, once Nick Park joined Ardman, the second factor really began to appear. Design is immediately recognisable. People say, oh, that's an Ardman film because it has the, uh, the eyes very close together and the big wide mouths. I think this is what people assume to be the most obvious factor. But to be honest, it's a bit trickier than that. Their design became unified over time. But looking at their earlier work, it did take a while to get there. Into a bathroom. And I, uh, I go a long way to go and get a nice um, Do you like lions as well then? Do you like steaks and chips with lions with it? Not with lions, Andrew, no. I don't like lion steak. I, I prefer the ordinary steak. Why this aesthetic is here grew out of morph, but really it started with Nick Park. Certainly in the early days, they wanted the Ardman factor, that, that character stuff, you know, probably the, a bit of Nick Park magic. They're really my... Well, the first characters uh, I've really um, put my heart into. I mean, they gave me my style, really. Um, the, they, the, the eyes close together, the, the wide mouth, the very exaggerated mouth movements, and Gromit's kind of looks of frowning, and all his expression coming out of his eyes. It all started off with Wallace and Gromit. Oh, wow. What a fabulous job you As Nick mentioned, there's two parts, the eyes close together and the wide mouth. It's easy to say that's the style, but where does it come from? Let's start with the eyes. The world of Wallace and Gromit, I know, absolutely, is Beano Town. Now, I know this for fact, because, because Nick and I have discussed this often. Very early on, when I, I was really interested in drawing cartoons, I wanted to work for the Beano. That was my ideal job, drawing cartoons for the Beano. Um, and so I, I did sort of fantasize about doing that for a while. It's there, right? The comic influences pushed the eyes together and have transformed the early Ardman claymation from this Nine minutes past the hour of six o'clock on Radio West to this. I try to spend as little time in here as possible, whether 
I can't actually get out and about, so I was sort of escaping to books and things. I don't like the look of this one. His eyes are too close together. So how about the mouth? I just love the way he said cheese, you know, and that suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> suddenly Wallace's mouth went extra wide. And, uh, you know, Wallace's character very much came from Peter's voice and the way he said Wensleydale. And, um, so Peter did very much create the character in that sense. Oh, won't you come in? We were just about to have some cheese. Oh, no, not cheese. Sorry, it brings me out in a rash. Can't stand the stuff. Not even Wensleydale. There you go. It's as easy as that. The character style continued forward for a very simple reason. Nick's films were successful. People began to associate this style with Aardman, and to be honest, he really likes to work within his style. I've always been quite keen to, to kind of, in a way, put my own stamp and style on, on things that I do. Um, but you know, without it seeming too kind of forced. And, and you know, from the beginning of Wallace and Gromit, the, you know, the wide mouth and the... And, and also speaking with very fundamental shapes, you know, for the vowels, you know, lots of very obvious shapes for the vowels. It's also a very northern thing, I guess, um, to use the lips a lot, and especially the bottom row of teeth. <laughs> Not cracking toast, Gromit. But as with any style, it can be quite limiting. It's very interesting because... Because in theory, I always, uh, I believe that we can design in any style, in theory, you know. I mean, I think to be entirely limited to the, um, you know, the kind of, the, the classic armor style, I think is, I feel is, is a bit limiting. I know that the audience loves it. I know they do. I realize that. With the pirates, you know, they, the style is different. It had to evolve because um, it was very interesting seeing um, the curse of the wearer of it just now. Because I've forgotten. Oh yeah, of course. Everyone has to be bald because funny. Uh, because here's a funny thing. I remember. I remember on Chicken Run uh, saying to Nick Park, "This guy's going to need eyebrows," and he said, "No." You can't, you, nobody has eyebrows, because because <laughs> because in his world, people don't have eyebrows. But if you've got a hat on or hair, you haven't got that expressive mobile brow. You can't do it. This is the ticket A number two. And they did evolve. Look at Pirates, Art of Christmas. Although it still feels like an Aardman film, they did introduce hair and eyebrows. And even Nick moved on for early man. Morning, Barry. Morning, dog. Mr. Rock coming hunting today. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't miss it for the world. So now we know they work in claymation and they have a unified, although evolving, aesthetic. But other studios have this too. It's not enough to set them apart. So what really does? I think the success has got something to do with their Britishness, actually. I think that's quite key to it. And it's something to do with their subtlety and, and underplaying, underplaying the humour. Sorry, Gromit. That was a bit thick. The humour in the mundane is sprinkled everywhere. Are you still ballooning, Mr... I do beg your pardon. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I, I mean the Baker-like balloon. Do, uh, do you still oh. buy it? And that's part of the humour they inject, though, as with the design, where does this British sensibility come from? Oh, she's not so bad after all. <gasps> I know why it's English, it's because we're English, that's why it's, that's why it's English. But what that means, I, is, I find it very, very hard to, um, to, to, to explain. It's a hard thing to nail down, actually. Um, but really, I think one huge part of this is how much they draw from British culture, particularly Britain's history on screen. So much better than the last chap we all went do lally over. You've all been... Don't be kind. I think all our references, you know, for me, I, personally, what in terms of what inspires me, I, 
I think of the movies that really made me laugh or when I was a kid or, or really scared me and I'm sort of using that as a resource really. And it's a bit reliable resource. A big influence comes from the features of Ealing Studios. And not just the humour and the charm, but also their strong sense of cinematography. It's something over the years at Artman we've, we've developed. Is uh, My takes always was, you know, it might be model animation, but it's a movie, it's a film. Mm. Let's do what you do in, in, in normal films. And, mm. uh, and drama is light it to, to, in, to best effect. They draw reference from Hitchcock. and even going so far as films like The Great Escape. It seems to just strip away everything else and eject the DNA that those earlier films had. These three components feed into the overall view of what we have of Aardman, but they do a lot more than just tell interesting, funny and charming stories. Some of my favorite music videos and advertisements growing up were actually made by Ardman. And really what they're demonstrating here is that it's about staying true to your vision and persisting with what they know works for them. Just stay right where you are, your ladyship, and we'll be with you in an hour. In an hour? I can't wait. In an Even partnering with American studios like DreamWorks or Sony, they fought to retain their sensibilities, not compromising on what makes an Aardman feature. And if I was to narrow this down to one single word, it's charm. They are just charming. That's an easy word to use. Lots of people use it. Um, and you can't define it and you can't, you know, catch it, whatever charming is. I think the charm is that word charm. There's a kind of classical relationship between Wallace and Gromit. There's no cynicism. I mean, yes, there's marketing and merchandising attached to all this stuff, but it's not, we don't make the films in a kind of cynical way. Ha ah, ha, we'll clean up on, you know, shampoos on this one sort of thing. It's, it's, a, it's a great, there's an integrity and kind of honesty about the storytelling, which I think people really love. As Peter Salas said, you can't write charm. It's something we all understand, like a nice warm cup of tea after a very long day. All's well that ends well, that's what I say. Really, it is more than the sum of its parts, but they all work together with honesty and integrity pushing toward a vision. All these influences and sensibilities culminate in a banner that makes me smile every time I see it attached to a project. And I mean, wouldn't you like your work to have the same effect? Windows are our speciality. Hi everyone, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for watching. This video was actually a lot of fun to make, although challenging in research, and of course even tougher to edit everything, I wanted to share down to a digestible bite. Not really sure I did that, but here we are. This video is thanks to my patrons, all these wonderful people here and more who support me with every video. If you want to join our community, just click the link in the description. From there, you can gain access to exclusive interviews, articles, and as well as a film club I run before each video essay. To be honest, the, the comments and insights shared in our Ardman Film Club really helped me shape the bones of this video. So please do feel free to join us over here.